the uh, sponsor of tonight's, uh, tonight's uh, meal, uh, Sidera Health. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Tony Dale. Uh, Dr. Tony Dale is the founder of Sidera Health. He is a uh, physician from, the, uh, from Great Britain. Sidera was founded in 2014 on the principle that people should share one another's burdens. And today Sidera has members in 45 states who share funds towards medical costs and creating a natural fit for direct primary care doctors. Let's hear from Dr. Dale. <laughs> Make sure that uh, I know how the technology works. Well, good evening, and uh, thank you for allowing some of your dinner conversation to be interrupted by what I share. Uh, as Lee said, I'm actually a, a British family doctor, uh, and so uh, my perspective uh, is perhaps a little different from most of yours. Uh, and I'm not just British, but uh, I was actually born in Taiwan, so I'm really mixed up when I try and figure out where I come from. Uh, in fact, uh, now Taiwan, for those of you who don't know, you know, that's that little island off the coast of China. And, um, uh, before all of our goods and services set on them made in China, they used to say made in Taiwan. And uh, you can tell I'm made in Taiwan because I'm clearly a cheap imitation. I don't even look Chinese. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it did give me a kind of unique perspective, I guess, uh, you know, growing up over there in a different environment, uh, heading over to England when I was uh, 17 to start at medical school. Uh, and no, that does not mean I'm a genius. The British system is different. You go straight from high school uh, to, uh, into a medical school environment uh, where I spent the next six years. Uh, actually, I find it kind of fascinating chatting with my American friends because the uh, medical school I went to was actually established in 1123. Uh, sort of puts history in perspective, doesn't it? They, they created uh, Bart's Hospital to try and help the Crusaders who were leaving England uh, but fell sick before they had left the island, hadn't even got over onto the continent yet. Uh, so, uh, and, and Bart's has a rather a unique reputation. Of course, it is a fine medical school, but it happens to be right next door uh, to the central meat market for the whole of Great Britain. And so everybody views all the surgeons created there as butchers. Uh, so, uh, I, I decided I wasn't moving into surgery. I, I probably wouldn't have been any good at it anyway. Uh, but all of that's completely irrelevant to what I'm going to try and communicate to you, because uh, when I came over here, uh, I didn't really know much about the American system. I had taken a brief three-month elective here during my training, uh, loved everything I, I knew about America, uh, but I, I came over here for uh, other reasons. Uh, and uh, nine years in, uh, I had an injury. Uh, I was trying to keep up with the kids on the basketball court, uh, and I tore my uh, ACL and uh, needed surgery. Uh, and um, everything went great until the bills came. And I thought, this is unbelievable. In today's terms, uh, it was a $35,000 charge uh, for something where I went into the hospital at uh, 6.30 in the morning and they discharged me home at 10.30 that same morning. Uh, there were no complications. I'm really grateful for the skill of the surgeon, but the idea of paying $35,000 for something just made no sense to me. Uh, and I happened to be a part of one of these uh, Christian healthcare sharing ministries. Uh, and I thought, I, uh, I, I just don't feel appropriate to ask uh, this Christian community uh, to be sharing all these medical bills. Uh, it's, it's, it's just outrageous. And so uh, I challenged the bills. And something happened there that really sort of has shaped the rest of this story because to my amazement, everybody just folded. I mean, literally, I called the hospital and I said, you know, I think these charges are outrageous. And uh, they said, well, what do you think uh, would be appropriate? And I said, well, <laughs> And I thought, how does this work? I, I called the surgeon. Uh, and and I, I, I said to the surgeon, I, I said, I deeply appreciate all you've done. You know, 
Uh, but, and I don't think you deliberately misled me when you told me it was going to cost $2,000, but I'm sorry I was so ignorant, but I didn't realize that that $2,000 was all for you and that everybody else was going to charge me all these other bills. That's how ignorant I was of the system over here. I wasn't in clinical medicine. I'd moved uh, sideways into some academic areas. Uh, and so I didn't know, as everybody literally folded when I challenged the bills, uh, whether they were giving me some sort of professional courtesy uh, or uh, was the system really that messed up? Well, it didn't take long to figure out that actually the system was even more messed up than I realized. Uh, and I must say to, you know, uh, having just listened to that incredible story of what uh, is happening here in the sort of Rosen group of hotels, uh, the only thing I'd say to you is don't even think of settling for only a 10% gain in your first year with all the hospitals. Um, when you start looking in depth at what's going on, uh, there are so many aspects of the system that really have moved from classic economics into something that I think most of us view as almost borderline immoral. And so what came out of my knee injury and my offer to the group it happened to be MediShare that I was a part of and I said, would you like me to help you negotiate some of these medical bills for your members. Uh, and they jumped at the idea of uh, two British physicians, my wife is also a doctor, uh, you know, helping them in this, and I had some spare time, so within a week it was obvious we were going to absolutely turn around what their costs were. Uh, and out of that, over the next 15, actually at this stage, 22 years, uh, we, we developed a company that has helped uh, all of the large Christian healthcare sharing groups uh, negotiate their bills, but we've also worked with um, uh, with Cigna and Aetna and AIG and American Fidelity and others who had all sorts of uh, medical involvement back in those days before the ACA. Uh, and, and so we found ourselves negotiating billions of dollars of bills, uh, saving enormous sums of money for people, and realizing that there was something fundamentally amiss. And then the Affordable Care Act comes in. And that just uh, I, I guess having come from a single-payer system and I saw where the ACA was inevitably taking us as a country and I realized that we were living in this sort of Orwellian period where you call an act the Affordable Care Act but which is highly unlikely to make anything more affordable uh, and sure enough uh, we've all lived with the consequences. And so inside, I began thinking there has to be a solution to this. Because having uh, navigated literally hundreds of thousands of people through the healthcare world, having worked in both the insurance and the sort of healthcare sharing space, uh, I found that I actually had a very strong bias uh, to the benefits of the healthcare sharing space, uh, even though the job was not being done perfectly. Uh, they were doing a good enough job that we found we had far less complaints uh, from all the families we tried to help who were involved in the, the health care sharing approach uh, than we did from families that were involved with the insurance companies that we were also representing and helping. Uh, and so I began to think, what is it going to take to take a methodology that is working very well but has now been sidelined by the Affordable Care Act uh, to a place where they had said no new groups could form uh, because a group, uh, according to the ACA, had to have been in existence in 2000, and, uh, sorry, in the year 1999 uh, for it to be legitimate to now be exempted under the law. Uh, but not only had they stopped new groups forming, they said it was only available to people who could sign the faith statement of the existing ministries. Now, I may be a Christian myself, but to me there was something, you know, offensive of the idea that the government would say that a great methodology that was out there working was only available to people of faith and not available to everybody. Uh, and so that's where, that's really where the ideas for Sidira began, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and you have on your, uh, on your table a little leaflet like this. Uh, which you're welcome to pick up and you're welcome to, to, to look at as we sort of talk about this. But uh, our tagline of we're good together uh, has a number of meanings. Uh, because one of the first things I had learned from the Christian healthcare sharing ministries was there is tremendous power in community. Uh, but that's really only a starting point. 
there's actually extraordinary power when you begin to bring together uh, what is represented in the DPC world uh, and what is represented, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in, in the world of sharing or medical cost sharing as we call it. Uh, and so I want to try and briefly explain that to you. The first is we think it's vital that the consumer have skin in the game. Uh, this is one of our sort of core values uh, which we describe our system as being consumer driven. Uh, the consumer needs to be engaged. If we don't deal with the issue of personal responsibility, we're never going to bring down the cost, particularly in the realm of chronic health. Uh, as you look at the overall cost of health care, something like 60 to 70 percent, depending on you know, what figures you believe, are, are tied up with chronic lifestyle diseases. And you cannot just tackle the economic side of this. Uh, you actually have to uh, begin dealing with the issues of behavior uh, and whether or not people are going to take responsibility for things as simple as what they put in their mouth from a cigarette to the food that we eat uh, and what sort of lifestyle they live and how they handle stress. And so we view individual uh, ownership of their health care as a vital component of what goes on. Okay, but Right tied in with that is that the access to the doctor-patient relationship is critical to the overall cost of health care. I loved, again, what Rosen have just taught us uh, from their experience uh, in their hotels and with their staff uh, of the dramatic changes they've made in health care when the doctor and the patient are brought directly together again. Uh, and so, you know, understanding these things is what uh, helps us see the, what happens, rather like our little leaflet says, uh, you know, when you think of peanut butter, you think of jelly, okay? Uh, when, when I think of uh, what we're doing in medical cost sharing, I think of DPC. Uh, and so when you then add that to the power of the sharing community, uh, and you, you take out all of the various layers of uh, middle cost, and into its place, uh, you provide a community of people who voluntarily choose to share each other's medical bills. That is incredibly powerful, especially when that community is open to everybody. And so our picture of what this looks like is that Sadira acts as a wraparound to what you are already providing to your patients. Uh, and particularly through some of the relationships we formed, for example, with, uh, with, with Hint, who are represented here and their platform, uh, we're, we're learning how to make it incredibly easy for any of your patients, any of the companies that you work with or the in individual patients and their families that you work with, to have an easy way to have the expensive medical costs dealt with through Sidera while all of the ordinary stuff uh, is being dealt with you uh, as DPC physicians. Uh, and so this really just shows, uh, if you like, that partnership uh, and what it looks like. We think that when you deal with the whole of the medical issue, what happens is you can go to companies, you can go to people and say, the money that you are going to save on your insurance costs by switching into a medical cost-sharing model is actually going to save you much more than the cost of actually including us as a DPC practice as a part of your care. And you can dramatically reduce the cost of all of those people that you work with. And so, whoops, that went, sorry about that, went one beyond. So we want to encourage you, direct primary care and Sidera, we believe, are built to work together. And we look forward to answering your questions as you reach back out to us. So Lee, thank you so much for the time.